In this tutorial, I will show you how you can combine Video Studio Pro X7 and PaintShop Pro. The two are a great combination, so let's utilize both software. So here in my timeline, I have a little video clip of a guy basically playing on his motorbike, and I want to really make this this little scene here pop out. And this, I want this to be the start of the video. So I'm going to take a snapshot and then I'm going to enhance the snapshot. So first thing I'm going to do is enlarge my screen so I can really see this picture. Now if I go to edit, I have the take a snapshot option. But I'm not going to use Video Studio to take the snapshot. I'm going to use PaintShop Pro to take the snapshot. So let's go into PaintShop Pro. I'm going to go to File, Import, and then Screen Capture, and then I've got Setup. So in my setup here, it gives me all my capture options. So area basically means I can des designate the area that I want to capture and full screen and so forth. So I'm going to leave it at area and I'm also going to leave it here at right mouse click. So how do I want to launch it? Uh, I can assign a hotkey if I wish. So my setup is fine. I'm going to press capture now. As you can see, it minimized PaintShop Pro and launched Video Studio straight away. So all I need to do is right click I'm going to get across here and I'm going to drag the selected area that I want to capture. And then left click and then it relaunches Corel PaintShop Pro. So see how the two work nicely together. Because PaintShop Pro is a professional photo editor, I can do so much more to this photo than I could in Video Studio. So that's why the two work so well together. First thing I want to do is I just want to enhance the photo slightly. So I'm going to enhance photo and just quickly do the one step photo fix. So now my, my colors are really popped out. Now what I want to do is I want to make everything black and white bar the rider and, and the motorbike that he's on. So I'm going to do this by splitting the red, green and blue channels. So I'm going to image, split channel, split red, greens and blue. I'm going to go and choose the red channel. So I'm going to delete the blue. No. And I'm going to de delete the green. No. So in here I have the red. And I'm going to go right click. And I'm going to go for copy. I no longer need this. So I'm going to delete that one as well. No. And I'm going to paste it. So right click again. Paste. And I'm going to paste it as a new layer. And there it is. I'm just going to grab the eraser tool I'm just going to raise the black and white where it is hidden or basically I'm going to reveal the color to bring the rider back into his full color so as you can see it does it quite well and quite quickly as well okay then once everything is done now I've already done this I'm going to fast forward but once everything is done it's just a simple matter of going to file and you have two options you can export it again and you can use the JPEG optimizer so the compression is going to be perfect but I'm not too worried anymore because in the Video Studio Pro X7 being a 64-bit version I have unlimited access to RAM so it it is quite capable of handling large files so let's just go straight back into Corel Video and minimize this screen so all we need to do now is bring that photo into our library we can do it in two ways we can use this folder and search the the photo and here it is or if you have a second monitor just click and drag into your library so here is my photo as you can see uh, black and white in the background the rider on the bike is now all in color and now I can just add it to the beginning of my timeline like so let's have a little preview So that effect worked really, really well. But I can do more now because now that I'm back in Video Studio, I can utilize all the FX filters. So I'm going to add a nice little FX filter onto my photo. So I'm going to go to FX. I'm going to use Zoom Motion. I'm going to double click, go into Customs Filter. So what I wish to do, I wish the photo to remain in this stands for about 10 frames and then on the 10th frame I wish the filter to start creating the zoom motion so I'm going to add in a keyframe here 
as you can see it's on 22 but I really need this to be on 1 and this one on 1 as well so as it moves along until it hits this keyframe then to the next keyframe you'll see that the zoom motion really starts to come into play let's press OK so now my photo is static it's, there's no effect let's go into project to view the entire sequence and play yeah, there you go you can quickly see how by combining the two software you can bring your project to the next level